Hi there, good afternoon and welcome back. Today we're going to be flying by the steps necessary to deploy an Oracle policy modeling rule base successfully using Siebel and creating a user interface element in Siebel so that the end user can take advantage of the rule base. Before we begin, certain prerequisites that we assume you have done. Namely, we assume that you have installed and used the smoke test to verify that your policy automation is installed correctly. We assume that you have also verified the outbound web services, specifically the outbound web service for admin smoke test, and that the path is leading to wherever your Oracle policy automation server is and that your Oracle policy automation server is running, whether it be running on WebLogic or uh, Oracle application server or in my case Tomcat. Once those prerequisites have been uh, set up and tested, let's walk through the steps. The first step of course starts in Oracle policy modeling. The first step is to have a rule or rules. Now I'm not a rule person so please forgive me if this rule is neither logical nor uh, very interesting but it illustrates a point. The rule has probably been written by somebody who maybe is not familiar with Siebel or is concentrating on designing the rule according to the specifics of Oracle policy automation. And the names such as B1, B2, B3, B4 and so on are neither useful and the names <coughs> the names of the attributes such as b1 b7 b6 b5 are private attributes they mean something to oracle policy automation but they mean absolutely nothing to siebel so the first step in making sure that your policy automation rule base is ready for deployment is to run a couple of reports the first report i suggest is the top level attribute the top level attribute will identify from within this rule base the outcome. In this case you can see that the outcome of this rule is a single outcome, the case can go to court and it is of type boolean. If this attribute does not already have a public name then you need to provide one because this is the name that will be provided during the mapping with Siebel. Specifically you should create a new properties file and within that properties file you should provide properties with names that correspond to the different attributes in your rule base. For example, from the report I can click on the attribute and I can see that the attribute corresponds to the outcome of the case can go to court. If there was not already a public name I would provide a public name here. The name B1, which refers to the same attribute, is invisible to Siebel and the public name is what is required for Siebel. The second stage of preparing your attributes is to do the reverse, is to run a base level attributes test report. This report identifies the base level attributes that will typically be generated in that will typically be coming from Siebel. In this case there are two. Is the case active and does a suspect exist? Again, if they are not already existing, you should create public names for them. To review, the attribute names such as B1, B2, B3, B4 and so on need to be translated into publicly available attributes, public names which Siebel will correspond to. Then, of course, you need to build your rule. When the rule has been built, return to the folder where your projects are built, in my case it's this folder, and look for the output subfolder and in the output subfolder you will find a zip file. This zip file will need to be deployed and it will need to be deployed to your Oracle policy mo automation server. I intend to use this for the Siebel determination server so I will place it in webinf classes in the subfolder called rule bases. 
If I intend to use it in any of the other mechanisms, such as web determination or the embedded web determination, I will place a copy in there also. Now that my rule base is deployed, I will return to Siebel Public Sector and I will go to Administration Polity Automation Mappings. I will create a new record for this rule base. Each rule base will require a mapping. I will specify a business object. I will verify that the mapping name is the same name as the rule base for simplicity's sake. I will specify an outbound port, which we will need in just a moment. I will then begin the process of mapping entities and attributes. For example, if I return to case test policy automation rule base and I look at my entities, I only have one entity called global. So I ensure that my entity is mapped to my primary business component in this case HLS case because it's a case that I'm trying to validate and then I will also create a mapping for my public named attributes case is active suspect exists and I will specify a data type and I will indicate which business component fields are providing the data for these base level attributes I will also identify using the same public name, the outcome. So I repeat, the base level attributes will become attributes here and the top level attributes will become outcomes here. Now that our mapping is ready we can proceed to configure the web service. Go to outbound web services and select either the determination server using traditional mapping or the determination server using the new integration object mapping. In my example I've used the traditional mapping screen so I have created a new service port. This service port name must match the service port name in the administration policy automation screen. The service name is policy automation determination server. I have modified the address to include the name of my rule base and I have made sure that one operation is specified. The pick list helps me. So now I have an outbound web service and I have a fully mapped policy automation rule base. But the end user still will not be able to benefit from my rule base. So I'm going to implement in the cases tab, in the case list, a new button. This new button will enable the end user to click and receive a response from the Oracle Policy Automation Server as regards, the as regards the readiness of this case to go to court or not. The readiness of the case will depend on two criteria. Is the case active? A primary suspect. When the end user clicks the button, the information is submitted to Oracle Policy Automation and the outcome is transferred back to Siebel in the form of a true or false result. This case is ready for court. This case is not ready for court. So let's study what we use to implement the case ready button. The, the button was implemented on the HLS case list applet. It was implemented in edit list mode and it was implemented as a simple mini button. The mini button has a method invoked. The mini button has a method invoked called run policy automation is case ready. This is typed manually and can be any value as long as it is a unique method. To execute the method, we used the example provided by Siebel. We used the policy automation smoke test and we used the example of these buttons. We, we chose the DS smoke test as our starting point because our policy automation rule base for cases will not use the web determination. It will simply use a web service 
and return the information to Siebel for processing. There is no HTML interface. There is no web determination. So before we look in any detail at HLS case list applet, let's study the smoke test applet. The smoke test applet, the DS smoke test button, uses exactly the same principle, a custom method. The example provided, surprisingly, is based on Siebel eScript and provides three simple steps to triggering our rule base through web through uh, determination server. The first part, three functions are provided. They are very simple functions to serve as shortcuts for selecting properties and property values from within child property sets. Why? Because the outbound web service returns a property set made up of multiple child properties. Only one of them is interesting, specifically the property set which contains the outcome. So these functions help us select a property set and select a property within that set. But they don't fundamentally change how this works. There is a pre-can invoke. As regular Siebel configurators will know, pre-can invoke indicates whether the button will be enabled or disabled. There are multiple ways to handle pre-can invoke, not all of which require script. This is perhaps a more a very traditional way of doing it. So if method name is equal to run policy automation smoke test, can invoke equals true. The user may click on the button. Because this applet, the smoke test applet, has two or three buttons, there's also a second method is used when we are using the integration object mapping. But for the purposes of our example, this is the important part. If the method name matches our custom method, then the user can click on the button and we can trigger our method. Let's look at the code itself. The code itself, whilst appearing quite complicated at first view, isn't really. The key parts are it uses Workflow Process Manager. It triggers the Policy Automation Assess workflow. It passes in the object ID as well as the rule base name and it calls the method called run process. All of this should be fairly straightforward to you. Then the output is retrieved from the response from the outbound web service and if the particular property exists in the output then a message will be displayed and the output will be displayed as part of the message. So let's look how we translated that into the HLS case list applet. In the HLS case list applet, although it is not an effective and resource friendly way of doing it, we have simply copied the methods. It would make more sense to have these methods in a business service so they could be used centrally and stored centrally only once. But for the purposes of speed, we've copied the text. Pre-can invoke as well, we've copied as is. The only difference is we have changed the name of the method and we've removed all the other methods since our applet only has one button. We've also slightly modified the pre-invoke method text. We have not changed anything to do with triggering workflow process manager. We have changed the name of the method and we have also changed the name of the property in the output set because this is the name of our property which comes from our mapping of our outcome. So this is our outcome and our message box will display the value of that property. I repeat, change this to the name of the property which represents your outcome in order that the message can display the value associated with your outcome no other changes were made. We'll now restart Siebel. We'll go to the case list applet. We'll select a case and click case ready. This case is ready for trial. We will place 
a breakpoint. And we will re-trigger our code. The advantage of triggering of having a breakpoint is that now we can use the watch window and we can identify that, for example, in the case of this policy automation rule base, there was a property set created called inps, which passed the name of the configuration as well as the object ID of the case. And as we can see, it used the policy automation assess workflow, the process name. The output contained no error messages. It contained a decision report, and we'll come to that later on. And it contained a result, and in the result was a child called response. And we see right at the bottom, case is ready, the value is true. Goal PS simply acts as a shortcut to our case is ready, true. We can also see that Siebel has queried the HLS case business object, the HLS case business component. We can also see that it has queried the repository business object component and decision report XML. It's done this in order to retrieve the mapping from the relevant policy automation administration screen. Now that we have triggered our case test on a number of occasions, in fact I've triggered it on at least 20, we can go to the case report list and observe that case report exists for the outcome case is ready. So decision reports can be sorted by configuration name. That about wraps it up for our little demonstration of how to implement a button. Uh, there are a number of question marks that many of you may have. For example, the use of script um, and also the fact of using di two different kinds of mappings, which is better, which is uh, slower, and uh, those questions remain to be answered. Have a great day. Bye-bye.